Improving the client's user experience. Uh, my name's Randy Carey, I'm from the States. Uh, I run Carey Tech Studios. Basically what I do is I develop websites for my clients using Joomla. And as I deliver uh, my deliverable products to them and try to train them on how to use this content management system to manage their content on their site, I have encountered several instances where the clients are a little confused by the system that I give them and I start seeing usability issues, all different types, based upon the, what the client wants out of the system and based upon the client's capabilities. And so what I've been doing is trying to think, how can I improve this? Because if I can deliver a system that's much easier for my clients to manage their content, I am delivering a better product and more value to my clients. And so the last few months I've been starting with what I call the IQ project, which stands for Improving the CMS User Experience. And through this, I'm trying to think of, uh, articulate the principles and best practices for setting up uh, a CMS for our clients to use. Also developing techniques and even some Joomla extensions that I feel are needed in order to help me deliver a better user experience for my clients. And so, uh, usually when I'm back home, I pass out my green business card because I'm, tr I'm building websites for them. But when I'm talking to fellow developers, web website developers, and uh, the Joomla community, I'd be passing out my maroon card because really the message that I've got here is here's some suggestions and ideas on how to improve uh, the usability for our clients to use the system. We tend to look at this, any CMS, Joomla for instance, as just uh, two different users. We have the people who develop the websites, build the websites ourselves, and then we have the people who visit the website. The CMS delivers the page to them. But we're forgetting a very important person, it's a very important user, and that is our client, the one paying the bill, the one who commissioned the project because he or she or they have a particular business value that they see in this project. And so what we end up doing is giving them, they have a view of, the, of a website um, such as a series of pages and content on the pages, and we see it as all the different parts moving in the background. They have a different motivation for what they want to do with the website. So when we're done delivering the web, building the website, we tend to deliver it uh, the same interface that we used to develop the website. And if you show this to a client, sometimes they get confused. There's a lot of features on here that they don't need. The terminology isn't always obvious. If they want to access their store, do they go to content or why components? And this K2 thing, what does that mean? We know it right away, but our clients don't know it. And we expect them to learn our language, to learn the way we navigate through the whole system. There are many features on here that someone can select and cause a lot of damage to their site. And we don't want to give them that sort of thing. So this is not really tailored for the user. It's tailored for us. We have so many features we have to build in this powerful Joomla uh, environment platform but the users only need a subset of that, and they have a different uh, motivation for coming to the site. So the solution then is to build uh, the, a CMS user experience for the client, give them their very own one that's different from us if it, as administrators. Don't just take what we get out of the box and give it to the, the clients. And the other thing is, as we put the usability, build usability for the front end for people coming, we need to think about usability for our clients. We don't have to worry as much about usability for ourselves because we're technical and we can figure all these things out. We work at command lines quite often. But our, our clients and their staff, they need something tailored for them just like we tailored for the front end. So the second thing we need to think about is we need to embrace complexity of the system in order to deliver usability to our clients. In other words, if we learn some more PHP or understand the model view controller, and so the different parts of our system, we can do a little extra work and deliver a lot more usability to our clients. Quite often, there's a tension between rich features and easy to use. 
in any system, if you put um, a lot of features into the system and make it a very rich one, there's a lot of complexity in using it, a lot of options. If you make it very simple, it's usually because you're stripping out the different features. And so when we grade CMSs, we usually kind of grade them somewhere where they are on this scale. Easy to use, but feature poor, or they've got a lot of features, but it's a little more complex. And we might put Joomla here as this green line, somewhere in the middle between some of the other CMSs. But I believe we can attain this. We attain it by giving the users their own user interface, and we do a little extra work, and now we can put into our system many rich features, and we build for them, tailor for them, a user interface that's just for them and doesn't have to be the same one we use for all of our features. It doesn't have to include it. And that means we can actually build a system that's easier than any other CMS or blogging platform out there that doesn't try to do that separation. They give the exact same development uh, environment as they do for maintaining content. But by splitting it, we, could, we can break this tension between features and ease of use. So, what I want to talk about today are some of the areas we can use to improve the client's version, the client's uh, usability for the CMS. What, one of the areas I'll talk about is front-end editing, because it matches the user's mental model of the website. Also, the client's version of the back-end that's different from the version we will be using to develop the site. Thinking about ACL, we need to embrace the ACL, and think of it in different terms than we did with 1.5. Start thinking in role-based um, access levels or groups. And then the, for the edit screens, instead of using the full features that we give, tailor that edit screen to what, how the client is using it. They don't usually need all the features that we need to use when we're setting it up or that maybe any other client might use. And we want to segment our users by their roles, by the rights they have within each roles, and also by their capabilities in using a technical system. Power users should use a power, get some power tools in there. And the lighter weight um, users, give them something simpler. And finally, talking about task-based workflows. Our users are using the system because they have a task that they want to accomplish. And we need to give them a workflow that's very streamlined and right to the point, giving them exactly what they want. So how do we do that? My mantra is we can do better. Uh, when we're giving, we, instead of giving them the same interface that we use to develop, there's several ways we can do better. And we have to ask ourselves, how can I do better? How can we build a better system? And then take the effort to build it. So the first thing I'll talk about is front-end editing. And this is, if we can put something in the front end and make it very intuitive for the user, this is probably the best way. Remember, our uh, clients are see and the staff are seeing web pages or websites as a series of pages, different components of information on those pages, and maybe the pages are interlinked. And so when they navigate to the right page, I want to change the content here. They aren't thinking about the database, how all well the data is related. They're thinking about this data on this page. And so we give them a tool so they can click a little icon if they're logged in and have rights to that and they can edit the content in line. This is out of the box now with articles and K2 and a couple of things. What would really be nice, and it's not fully there yet, is to allow our users to edit any content like this in modules, such as uh, down here, uh, the bottom, uh, the little text and the little photo, and set all these different features instead of having to go to the back end and edit content in the modules. Or in the uh, showcase that rotates, maybe you click and see all the different options they have and choose the order or which ones are going to be included or even edit one of those items. It makes sense for them mentally to be able to go here and click and do that. Those features aren't necessarily there. We could build them. And I don't know why people haven't been building them. Um, I've actually taken the modules and had been able to make a module with an article in it and you just, it will show up and you can actually click and edit that particular small module because it's a small bit of text in an article. And it didn't take a whole lot of work to do. I do plan on releasing that a little bit, but it's uh, right now kind of the prototype stage. Uh, then if we start dreaming, we can see things more complex pages, like a, a restaurant menu has several items. Why not have a little icon pop up for like prices or for the whole item, and the person who's in charge of the restaurant just goes ahead and clicks on the, uh, the item and changes the price, maybe changes the description, that sort of thing. That would be very nice. 
You might know that uh, they're talking about in the Joomla 3.0 to adding several of these features in there. Uh, I'm hoping to see several of them. Uh, they're going to be basically allowing you to edit quite a lot of things. But I think that leads to the question, if we can edit anything from the front end, should we be editing everything from the front end? I mean, then is the front end any different than the back end? So no one's really, I, I haven't really heard a lot of discussion about this as to how do we decide what gets edited in the front and what gets edited in the back, assuming that we can bring things to the front to edit. So I've got a couple of ideas, I'll take a stab at this. If we have content on a page that's particularly set to the one page, and you see where it is, and it matches the user's mental model of the website, give them the ability to click it and edit it there. They don't have to know all the details in the back end. It matches their model. But sometimes we need to manage a whole list of items. Uh, Maybe we want to see what items are published, which items are featured. We want to see if some items are missing. We want to see what items are in categories, do things in, in, in uh, mass, uh, change their categories, that sort of thing. Um, so when we need to see the whole view of all the items, I think that works better in the back end. And sometimes we have web applications. Consider an eShop. You've got not only the products and their um, prices and descriptions, you've got discount codes you have to manage and their expiration dates. You've got the orders that have come in. You've got to um, manage the order fulfillment process, um, the gateway, all those sorts of things. So a web application that we put on our website really probably belongs in the back end. And then you've got structural things like the menu. I mean, it isn't as simple as just the name fitting here in this bar or on one of the sub-menu items. If you work with Joomla, you know there's several other things that goes with a menu page, what modules are going to be displayed and that sort of thing. And do we really expect the users to understand that? And if we do, then maybe they need to be in the back end where they can see the whole structure of the site. Another thing is administrative tasks, such as user management, permissions for the users, even things like the directory for the temp directory, the log directory. All those sorts of things pretty much belong in the back end. So I basically split these so that on the front end, it's things that matches the user's mental model. One, usually singular things that exist on a page and it's content based. But when it gets a little deeper, it gets a whole list of things, a whole store and web applications, or the structure of the site or administrative details, that probably belongs in the back. But the really interesting thing is how can we make a more usable interface for the back end? And as I'm arguing, we should give the clients their own back end interface. Here's an example of what I'm talking about. In the upper side, You'll see this is what we normally do, what we work with on, say, Blue Stork, and uh, how we develop a site. And below, I have something tailored for the user or one of my clients. Testimonials, events, order fulfillment, store management. Pretty simple. And all they have is a dashboard and a help bet up in the tab. Very clean, very simple. It uses the terminology that matches their business model. But up above, this doesn't match their business model, and it has many places they can go wrong. We need the top one for ourselves developing the sites. Our clients will be confused and they'll find a less usable system if we try to give them that. If you look at this, there's a question that's kind of being begged. If we call this the admin template, can we call the bottom one a client template? Well, there is no such thing as a client template in Joomla, but I only use the term here because maybe if we think um, virtually of a client template, we can realize there's actually a different interface, a different look. It's still an admin template, we just tailor it for the client. So how do we implement this? Well, one way is through the ACL. We go ahead and we set up certain user groups and say, if they are administrator or super user, um, we're going to give them this top screen. If they are staff, which we define some way, maybe it means that they just aren't administrative, then we give them the bottom one. And we can set that up with ACL rules. And in the code, we go ahead and display certain, like the menu bar items or the dashboard items are displayed only to um, administrators if it's administrative and only to staff if it's staff. And so we do that in the code. Another thing that can augment this or actually totally almost replace that is using template assignment. What we would do here is we designate one of the templates. We have several admin templates in our installation. And one of them we designate as going to be for the client. And we make that the default. So whenever the client creates a new user, 
they will by default get this bottom template that's designed for the client. We as administrators then will make an exception and assign ourselves to a different template and that template has been designed for all the administrative details um, that you see that we're, that we're used to. And if we want to, we can still work with a client, but we're probably going to be developing a site more with the administrative one. It's really a rather simple technique. I wrote an article for the Joomla magazine two months ago, or a month ago, whatever, uh, showing how to change the menu. Because when we do this template, we want to change the menu, we want to change the dashboard items, the way people navigate through. And it really wasn't that tough. Uh, you can go back to the article and see, I give it more detail on how to do it. So you see up here, we give the client content, store, newsletter, testimonials, help, and it drops down and shows all the different branches of the store that somebody might want. It's the terminology our users and clients want. And um, then the administrative is totally different. It's not that difficult. Basically, we override the menu view, the view of the menu in the admin. So we come to administrators, modules, mod menu, template, and the de what the default does is just basically it's a small file, switches, says, if, if we're in an enabled state, I'll load the enabled uh, menu, and if we're in a disabled state, I'll load the disabled submenu. So we want to copy these two bottom ones, bring them down. If you understand overwriting, I use overwriting a lot for, for accomplishing this. Um, administrator, remember we're not in the site, but we're an administrator. Templates, whatever template you're using, HTML, and you just move them into the mod menu that matches up there. It's a co common pattern. So when you go there, you open up the file and you'll see something like this. But this is the code that I've added. It's really not that difficult. If you notice for each item here, I, this is represents these three lines here, represent store, orders, and customers. And here's you add the node. Here's store with the text that's being displayed. Here's the link. And if it's a parent, we say true. If it's a child, we don't have to put anything. That's the defaults to false. And uh, this will create the menu. I think most of us, if we know a little bit of PHP, can edit something like this. And we buy an awful lot of goodwill and usability by modifying the menu for our clients. And then if we want to say which things, if we want to put it all in the same template, and which one sh is shown to this group and which one is shown to that group, well, we do something really simple. We have the user object already in place by the time we get to the view. We call the get groups, which returns an array of group IDs. And we just say, well, if in this case, I want to know, I create two variables, is super, is staff. Are they a super administrator? Are they a staff? They're going to be one or the other. And I say, well, if they have group eight in their array of groups, which is the super admin uh, ID, then it's going to be true. If not, it's going to be false. And then staff is just the inverse of super. Now, you may have different rules for your clients as to what the staff and what is uh, the administrative part. But whatever that is, uh, put that logic up here. And then all you do in the code that you add, the different menu items you add, say if is staff, and if it's true, those menu items will display. Then you go to the ones that are there already, which takes the ACL code, and you add the little bit, and if they are not staff. So if they're not staff and have the rights to access this menu item, that menu item will display. Very simple way to take one menu and make it split and show to totally differently depending on the, how we qualify what a staff and what an administrator is. Another technique then is to work with a dashboard. As you're probably aware, there's a quick icon showing up and a lot of times we don't need all these quick icons. So what I do here is I actually unpublish the quick icon um, module. And then I go to the site admin module. This is the admin module, I'm sorry. Um, and I create a new one. And one of the types for the admin modules is that old familiar module type, custom HTML. And what I do is I take the HTML that I found under the icons and I copy it in there. And so what I'm doing is basically replicating for each of these icons, I just replicate this code. Again, you've got the reference, the link where it's going to, what the source is for the image and the text. And then it has all, because of CSS going on, you've got, when you hover the mouse over, you get the turned paper look sort of a thing, just like you do on the icons. And I can create, as you see earlier, I can create, I can create separate ones, uh, dashboard, events, testimonials, and newsletters. And when we get to the ACL, you'll see how that's advantage that some people get to see some and some don't see the others depending on what rights they want to see. So you don't put them all in one. Um, Rocket Theme has their mission control, and they've actually made it a little bit simpler yet. 
Um, this is actually, I've done some CSS work to make it look this way, break it out. They usually have one big area, but you basically take the rock quick links module, just like I did the custom HTML, and you just create whatever instances you want of those. And editing it is very simple. You put the title in, you put the link, and you pick the icons. And what I did is I took the icons from Red Shop, for instance, and dropped it into the folder where they have all their icons. And those icons now are available for me to select as well. And so I could come up with a very simple dashboard like this. The next area I'd like to talk about then is the ACL. Um, the goal that we have here is that our users, when they are managing our, our staff, or whatever they say, they have a user manager who's going to manage all the users and the rights that they have. We want to have a list of roles that people will be using when they get into the CMS. And then for each person, they can go and they see all these different roles and they click what, they, what that person has rights for. Based on what they click, their dashboard or menu, however we set it up, will show only the items relevant for that particular person. So you see here we click three of them, we see this one, click two different ones, they get a totally different view. And it's very, it's, in the language here, it's very easy for our clients and our, their staff in order to understand, do they have rights? Are they event manager? Are they order fulfillment? Those sorts of things. And they click. And if a person changes uh, positions, maybe they pass a responsibility on to somebody else or somebody else comes in, you just, it's very easy for them to maintain the roles and responsibilities on the user profile, just going here and clicking what's right for that person. I think we don't see this role-based ACL because we're thinking too much still in the old 1.5, where ACL was basically a linear hierarchy. You belong one place on here. And if you're public, if you're registered, you got the public, but more, you keep incrementing your rights and privileges. But that's all really gone away. We still take the same old ACL and put it in by default, uh, the whole same configuration pretty much, into the 2.5 world, but we don't have to. What this allows us to do is take our groups and set them up in some hierarchy. And we can have sibling groups that each one has their own responsibilities and roles that are independent of the other. They don't have to build incrementally. And so we can go more horizontally in our hierarchy here. So what do I do when I start out for somebody? I want to give them back end access. I'm not going to give a manager or admin because they open up too many things. So I, give, I start out with a back end access. I create a group and I start with number one, one dot, because all the groups are listed alphabetical. So the first order, I want to have my special groups up front. So I go one dot back end access. I go to the global configuration and in the global configuration, I've got an option, admin login. I want to make that allowed. Any group that inherits from the back end access now means if, if, they have, if they belong to that group, they can log into the back end. And then, of course, whatever group they have, hopefully I've given them more rights to access other parts in the back end. So this is the, the window to let people log in the back end without having manager or administrative rights. And if we have a really project for our clients, we, just, um, we, we might just take the back end access and give them all the rights that they need. For each component, we'll go and say access, component, create, edit, edit own, that sort of thing. Uh, that's if we really don't need to have all these different roles. And for some smaller clients, this works quite well. But what if we do want to have different roles? Well, we set this up. Under back end, I create different groups, and here they are. And for each group, I go to the component that corresponds with that, with that role, and I set all the different privileges or permissions for that one. Go to the right component for the newsletter, and uh, set that for that, and the same thing with the store. I also do the same thing with access levels because access levels are important to tell us what things we're going to show and modules are assigned to access levels. Don't know if you've noticed this, but the access levels we get out of the box are public, special, and admin. They really have no differentiation in the back end. I can set that to anything I want, any of those three, and if you, in the old way of doing things, if you're an admin or a manager, you're going to be able to see it. There's no way to separate it. So what we do is we create role-based access levels. And so this particular module, for instance, events, has an access level of event. And event only accepts members of the event group. It's a one-to-one, -one, it doesn't have to be one-to-one, -one, but in this model, to make this work, you make that a one-to-one -one thing. And so for each of these, we have their own particular access level it maps to. 
And people belonging here then will see that because they have the access level that maps to it. And again, this is what we are striving for. And by doing, setting up the simple configuration like this to having a role-based ACL, we have the ability for the users to use very simple terms, clicking those, and they will see the back-end interface accordingly. I wrote a two-part article for Rocket Theme magazine. So if you go to rockettheme.com, check out their magazine. I think it's the January, March issue. I go into much more detail on how I do this, use it, set up the whole ACL. I know it gets confusing for people. But uh, if you go to Rocket Theme magazine, you'll get the more details on how I did that. And if you get really a uh, little more uh, particular, you can go ahead and use some CSS tricks and suppress some of these items. For instance, why do they need back-end access? They only are interested in events, newsletter, or stores. So I suppress that with a display none in CSS. I don't show them the manager, admin, or super users because I, the users that I have uh, are going to be, whoever's going to manage the users, they don't need to set people to any of these other ones. So you can use some tricks to have their display be much simpler and know things that you say, don't, don't, don't let them be an admin. You don't have to tell them that. You just don't show them it. Clients edit screens. Um, what I think we need to do is, is uh, also override the, the edit screens we have that we give our clients. This is Red Shop's uh, product detail, and they have to list all these things. I'm certainly not faulting them for this. I mean, it's, it's a very rich application, and you need to have all these different fields because you don't know what your, all the clients are going to need. But when the client looks at that, they're confused because several of these options they don't need. And if I didn't put the question marks there, they aren't even sure which ones they're supposed to enter and which ones they aren't. We can do better. So what we do is we override. In this case, I overrode the default, which is the product one, and one of the tabs, which is represented by a sub-template product attribute. Basically, what I did for every field in that file, which is the table row, I add a class. It's either required, important, optional, info only, or not used. And then I add CSS styles in a style sheet that's being pulled in that will style each field accordingly. And of course, all the fields they aren't using, I just go to not used. And if for some reason they need to use it, I go back and change not used to whichever one they want. And I come up with a screen like this, where the, the, the ones that they have to use high contrast, black with white text, even get a little bit of descriptions in there to help remind them why they need to select a category. Um, the secondary ones are here. And uh, the optional ones are there. And I thought, you know, when they go to the front screen, it really is helpful if they can see a picture of the item instead of having to move over the tab. So they still go to the tab to set the, the item image. But I just go ahead and add another table row back here and put that image on that home page. And here's the page in the bottom of what it was when we get out of the box as we use it from Redbox as we get it fresh. And for us as developers, but that's the screen that I give my one particular client. And each client might be a little different based on are they worrying about shipping and length and weight and things like that. Um, also on their product attributes, this is what we do. Like This is for someone who is um, building uh, furniture and he wanted to have lists. Well, green treated is going to be this price and red cedar is that. And several products had that. Well, I need this. This is a kind of a confusing screen. It's got all the features that I want. And I can figure it out and make it work. But this is what I want to give to my client. So I go and override that screen on the client view. And the client sees they can change the title, green treated, red cedar. They can change the order, say which is going to be pre-selected, and set the price. That's all they need. I'll give them something simple like that. And I'll deal with the bottom one. I'll deal with the complexity. And I'll give them the usable simplicity. And so for every edit screen we work with, we should ask ourselves, how can we do better? Because quite often, we probably can get rid of a lot of clutter and detail. Let's consider the articles. Um, I always thought the articles were a little bit too much detail for things I want to give my clients. Uh, for instance, what they usually want is just this red area in the bottom. They want to enter text. They want to have the buttons, you know, some edit things. Maybe they want fewer buttons, but they need the buttons. And of course, they've got to give a title, but they really aren't so concerned with the other things. They get in the way. They kind of clutter. What's important? All these things in yellow, it's like maybe they don't need that. So I do the same thing. Well, first of all, first Rocket Themes approach to it. And you heard about this. They're talking about doing this in the 3.0 for default now. But Rocket in the Mission Control is doing this with putting all these things under. They moved a lot of the things, put them under the publishing and SEO. Or actually, I put the term SEO in there. I thought that more meaningful instead of metadata. 
um, article display and permissions. And so whatever tab you're on, you see it. So for the article, it's rather simple. And I still said, I get to be better. So I came up with this. Basically the title, the category, and the status. And what I've done is I've moved the alias down to the SEO tab because it's really, that's, you want to set the alias to have a usable keyword. And some of the other things I'm assuming for this particular client, they don't need to worry about access control. They don't need about the language. They don't need, maybe they aren't using the feature option. And uh, they don't know what the ID is. Why should I show it to them? So I give them a much simpler system by overriding the view for articles. And it's something I can repeat over and over for each of my clients. When you go to another tab like um, the uh, advanced options, there's a lot of options there. And I get really frustrated going through these things, reading each one to make sure I get it set right and think, do I want to change it or not? And so in this case, I'm giving the user only the option of show intro text. You know, and I'll let them change it in this case. Maybe I don't even want to give them any options at all. But the questions we need to ask ourselves, do we want to make our, the staff and our, the users of the system have to make those decisions for every single article? Do we want them to make decisions? What if they go ahead and change things so they modify the date? What if they, uh, do they, we want to give them the option to change the print options? A lot of them we don't. If we have two different classes, well, we use our little ACL tricks in the code where we can say, well, for some groups, they'll see some options and other groups, they won't see options. So I think removing most of this clutter and decision-making process from the user, if they don't really need it, that makes it much, much more usable. Segmenting our users. We have to realize we have different types of users and systems. Maybe not in the small systems if you're working with just one person running it. But if we really want Joomla to start going more after enterprise sort of systems, larger systems, they're going to be bigger companies that have more uh, people in there and people with different roles. And so we need to segment them. Segment them by their responsibilities, segment them by the rights they have or permissions for the responsibilities, and segment them by their capabilities of using the system. You already know how I'm using the approach here for uh, segmenting users as based on their responsibilities. But sometimes for each responsibility, we have different permissions. And maybe one permission, this kind of greenish color here, um, that's what we do for base. But another higher level needs to delete and edit the state. So what I do is I, underneath each area or each role-based group, I add now another subgroup that has the same um, access as this, but now adds to it more permissions. I think the old. Joomla 1.5 try to have like in the, man, the, like the author, editor, publisher, and it kind of comprehensively went through the whole system. I find it better if we're going to add rights individually underneath each of these because the person who has rights to go do a little more work on the newsletter may not be the person that has the rights to do more on the store. So what I do is uh, this direction I add the roles, this direction I add the rights or privileges. But what about the users that vary on how they use it? There's some people who use the system every other week. They're infrequent users, and they probably don't remember everything from week to week. Maybe they don't care as much. They're just paid staff. And then they get the people who use it every day, and it's very aggressive, and they know it. And they'd feel frustrated if you didn't give them a few extra tools in there. So we need to accommodate them. And what I suggest then is we set up different profiles in JCE. JCE, the content editing tool. Uh, I hope you're using that. I think it's a great tool to use, and it allows us to set up different profiles. So what we do is my standard might be this group, and this is the icons that I'll give this particular group. My light one I cut back, and I can make it as simple as undo, redo, copy, paste, and uh, insert a photo. Maybe that's as simple as I want for some people. It depends client by client. Then you get the power users. I want to give them the ability to create tables and maybe edit the styles, that sort of thing. I don't want to give that to everybody. I only want to give it to the people who can do it. So I basically create different profiles. And here they are. I have the light, the power user, and the standard. And I want to assign them based upon their groups. Because remember, I want the user manager to be able to look at the user profile, see the groups, and select things intuitively to what belongs. So now I've added another block of groups. Number one was the back-end access, the roles and rights. Number two, following right behind it, is the editing tools. Light, power user, or standard. And they put it alphabetically, so I would have gone light, standard, and power user, but I can't change that. 
Um, but then you can go in this person, they have rights to the events and newsletters, and they're a power user. They'll get a, a richer tool set, as you see there. Then there's also things we can do, like with JCE, as far as what directories do we start with their roots, and that can be very valuable. Maybe we have a lot of staff, we don't want them messing or um, getting their hands on the assets, uh, the images, the documents, whatever, at a more global level. We want to push them farther out. And so we and also want to make it simple. So when they log in and they see the different um, files to browse, it starts out empty. But then an admin or somebody who has more rights, they're starting at down here. So these guys are seeing the staff as their root. And so we're able to isolate these people from files they should not be getting their hands on by using the JCE configuration. In this case, it might be images staff, docs staff, video staff, where the admins get the image directory as their root, docs and videos. And it works very efficiently if you want to isolate certain parts of content from different people. And again, we create now another profile in uh, JCE and create the profiles that we need to implement the rules we want. I also encourage you to buy the uh, icons that come with, that you can buy for the commercial ones with JCE. Uh, they are better. It offers a lot of extra usability. And for $30 a year or whatever, it's like, come on, your users or your clients are worth it. Sometimes, though, you can't find a button. And uh, I had one client who wanted me to give them the ability to take their staff to select their items in an Excel spreadsheet and paste it in so it comes out as HTML table. There's no buttons to do that. So what I had to do was get in, look at, try to do some figuring out how the whole JavaScript buttons work and this and that, and built my own button for Excel. That basically, you do the same thing. Just paste it in like you would a Word doc, and when you save it, it saves it in the HTML file so they don't have to copy cell-by-cell -cell contents or put tables around it or whatever they normally do. Uh, so if you have a special need, uh, it does cost money to pass on to your client, but then you maybe have a tool to give someone else. Um, but it does make sense sometimes to build that extra tool to give that extra usability that your clients want. Because they may be struggling a lot if they did a lot of data pasting. And another thing I built, um, the other one I built for 1.5, I have, don't have it for 2.5 yet, but this one I built uh, back in 1.6.1.7 is a heading button. And what, what I find when you, it's really important for our clients when they have an article to say, Give a heading, right, for SEO purposes. But where do they go? Is it styles? Is it format? And if they're infrequent users, they don't remember. And they forget. So what do they want to do? They want to go to the bold button, have this title, and make it bold, maybe a little bit larger. Well, so what I've done is I've gotten rid of these, and I created my header button next to the bold. And hopefully when they see it, and I have a higher contrast, black and white, they'll hover over it, get the different options. Oh, I want the article heading, or I want a third level heading, or whatever titles I want to give them and they've highlighted the text, go to that button, automatically applies the H tags for them. And I want it to use the t terms that makes more sense, article heading instead of H1. Um, if you're doing something like with a play, where they have actors and this and that, you could do the same sort of concept, just take actors, um, venue or whatever, and there's a button and you can click it and automatically formats it the way you want. Task-based workflows. This is really important because our users are using our CMS because they usually have a task that they want to accomplish. And if we make it challenging for them, they're not going to do it or they're going to grumble. And uh, it's very important to make that easy and streamlined. When I say task, I mean things we can conceptually think of, like testimonials, a restaurant menu, specialized inventory listings or events, and to manage those sorts of things. I'm going to use the specialized inventory as an example. This is a um, component that I built for a, a pet store place that wanted to list their puppies and their kittens. I'm showing the puppies part right here. They take a picture of the puppy, go log on the site, hook up to the camera to the computer, upload their photos and all the information, and it, all their clients get to, or customers, you know, can look and see what puppies are in this week without having to drive in. It's been very, very good for them. Um, so how do we build a component like this, so a task-based thing. Well, you know how I start out. I start out with a simple just a few tasks. They don't get confused. They can say, okay, I want to manage the testimonials or I want to manage staff. Oh, I want to manage puppies. Click on it. Second step, they get a list of all the puppies. They look at that. They find the one they want. They click on it. And here they get to one screen with all the information they want for editing the puppies. It can't get a whole lot simpler than that. 
Um, and when the puppies, they have the, they have, you have the category. They've got things like the breed, male, female, the color, registry, the pricing. They can upload the photo there, and they have a short description. Well, we can also build applications, sort of, with CCK, and a lot of people do that. And the problem, I think, with CCKs is that it's easy for us to develop, but when we turn it over to the client as is, it's not as easy to use. Uh, so we actually are not doing them as much of a favor. It's just fast for us to put it together. But let me show you an example of how we do it out of the box and how I would improve upon it. I mean, how you can improve upon it. We start out here, they have to go to components, and of course in their mind, I'm up the loading puppies, maybe it should be content. And they go to here, oh, I've got to click K2. And then the store manager says, well, I'm uploading puppies. It should be K9, not K2, shouldn't it? It's supposed to be a little humor there. Um, and, and, and really, that's their perspective. Well, K2, what is that? We know, but they don't know. And then they go to items, and items kind of make sense, but they might want to read down to see which, if they're infrequent particularly, read down to make sure items really is the one they want. There's a lot of thought processes and steps going on. Now, they have to, if they get a lot of items, they've got to select the category for puppies, and then they select the item. And they come to the screen, and let's say they created a new item. Well, at this point, they've got to create, select the category, so it happens in the second screen or the third screen either way. And then they have extra fields and images, and um, let's say an extra, the, the description is going to go in the extra field, so they only have two tabs. By the time you look at it, they've got seven little clicks that they have to follow. Plus, you get all this other information in the yellow or greenish area there that really they don't need. It gets in the way, but when I'm not highlighting any green, they don't know what they need or not. So how do we improve on it? Well, you know how I start out with the task, right? So this really simple, gets rid of all the clutter, uses terminology they're familiar with, and then I wrote a plugin recently that allows me to read the line and, and determine if you, if you put the link here and you add, normally it's like com k2 and view equals items. If you add and cat ID and put the cat ID, this plugin reads it, sets the session cookie to the right filter of that right category so that when you click that link, you get everything filtered to just that particular category whether it's category two, category three. So all you do is you copy that, the link and add cat ID. Now I got it working for K2 and articles and I will be putting in the JED. I don't have it there yet, but it will be going there. Uh, and so that means for puppies and staff, they might both be an application, so to speak, that we put in K2, but each one links to the particular one. We don't expect our users to try to figure out why do you have staff in this and this thing called K2? It goes straight there. So once we get to the screen, well, let's do what we do before. We override the view file. As you see here, we add, we just basically around the whole text of that view file, we add a div. And put the simple code, id equals cat hyphen, and then we get the cat id. And so what we do is everything, the whole context of the screen now is in the context for category two, it's cat hyphen two. If it was three, it'd be cat hyphen three. All we do now is write CSS files a CSS file, listing the rules. So for cat2, I list all the things I don't want and say display none. The tabs go away. The sidebar is now invisible, so it doesn't distract. And this isn't all that far off from the component I built by, from scratch. The only thing is you've got image and extra, fill, extra fields here. And if I really want to do some extra PHP work, I could have said on this category, I'm going to put the images in here so they could upload the image on that screen as well. So I've kind of, the point where I actually can use K2 like a web application and avoid all the little out-of-the-box problems, you ha usability problems you have when you're trying to deliver to them an application. Because how do we implement this? I gave you uh, some, uh, some examples, and I said in order to implement, in order to separate the client's view from the administrative view, we have to do a little extra work. We have to embrace some complexity and do some work. We want to tailor this user interface like we tailor for the front end. It's a little extra work. You want to do it every single time. My suggestion is this. Take your client template or environment and build, build whether it's a template or whatever, and build, a, build out the environment with all the starting points. So you don't have to repeat it. Archive it with a Kiva backup and go to your client site and instantiate it there you will start out then with a lot of the features already in place that you have set up as your uh, de facto.
for your websites. So, for instance, in that base template, uh, or base uh, installation, maybe front-end editing, maybe you've got some modules that can do front-end editing, um, and you put them in there. On client uh, backend, maybe you load, you're going to separate one template that's going to be for the client, and one's for the admin. And you've got the different menu overrides. Put all those in place. Also, on the client template, you want to put the, the, uh, the client's edit screens, all the overrides you're using. They might not even use some of the components, but just put all the overrides. They're small files. Put them all in that particular one. So whenever you do install the, the, um, applic the component or the modules, whatever they're going to be accessing, you've got the client's view already written once. You might have to modify it a bit, but you've got most of the work in place. Set up the base uh, uh, ACL groups that you think you're going to be using. Also set up your JCE, so it's got the profiles. Set up to at least the default. You might want to change it again, but you've got it all in place. And then if you have some task-based workflow, if you want to use the K2 uh, trick that I was talking, showing how you can make that go really fast, have the right plugin, um, have the right CSS files in place, so that as soon as you install it, you've got most of that in place. You just need to maybe change a few of the CSS rules. Like you don't have to show all these tabs for any one particular category. And it's all in place once you install it. So the emphasis I'm, I'm placing is that we need to give the users of our products a different user experience than what we face um, as we develop the website. They don't need as much. They don't care about a lot of these features. If they're not appropriate for them. And we want to also put the energy into tailoring the usability for our clients as we put in tailoring the usability for those people visiting the websites. There's three different users of a CMS, and we need to recognize that and respect it. Remember I talked about the fe rich features and easy to use. I really feel if we separate the view or the user experience for the client from the, the person building the website, that we can accomplish something like this. We can build a very, very easy to use. And as I said, even some of the simpler CMSs or blog-based CMSs, um, if they don't split out the client and development, they can't compete with something that's tailored specifically for um, the client, as, as you can provide. This is added value to your product that you're delivering, maybe added price. Um, I hope that you have an interest in providing that for your clients. I see Joomla as a well-tuned instrument like a piano. There's a lot of parts in there. Somebody said it was like seven million dollars or more if you were going to try to build it from scratch. It's a well-tuned instrument like a piano. But using that analogy, I think we, if we talk about user uh, improving the client's user experience, we get the most bang not out of trying to further improve the instrument or adding more to the instrument, but by learning how to play the instrument better. Taking the parts we have already and using some of the tricks I've done and still thinking out of the box, how can I make this better? We can do better. How can I do it? And start thinking in those terms. And we will develop a much better system. And I think the big, biggest gain is learning how to use what we have already. Um, as I said, I, I'm trying to do thought think tank or whatever, and developing uh, techniques and some, a few components and sort of things. I just started the IQ project, so the website doesn't have a lot on it yet, but you can go there if you want to contact me. Uh, I've got a web form in there to reach me that way. I do plan on uh, this place you can subscribe, so I can send you notices if I'm going to be uh, releasing some little products or some ideas and tips. I want to make this more of a, a thing, my way to communicate uh, this particular area to uh, fellow developers, the fellow Joomla community. And um, eventually I'll get the, you know, and then start putting out something in beta, and then put it out in the JED. But I hope that you see uh, that the, uh, giving the clients, the people paying for the site, giving them a very usable product, uh, what value that adds and how much they appreciate it. And really, if you think about it, it isn't all that hard. Thank you very much for your attention.